Schönen guten Abend, meine lieben Hörer, das ist die American Continental Radio Show with your host Wolfgang Schneider and of course uh, Chris Schaffenberg, our engineer, and we welcome back uh, our great artist here, uh, Tina York, just returned from the Candy Center about 14 days ago. Tina, uh, welcome here, and right. give us a little report, what was going on there? Well, we had a very interesting launch of the Space Shuttle Endeavour. It was at Kennedy Space Center, as most of the launches uh, are done from there. And uh, Endeavour, of course, if, as most people know by now, is a new space shuttle that has been uh, put into service after Challenger exploded. Challenger exploded, I guess they felt they needed another space shuttle. So they put um, Endeavour was done in America, was was uh, produced in America, in Houston, and then it came over to Kennedy Space Center and was uh, serviced and now finally was deployed. And its first mission was to uh, capture a wayward satellite. In fact, it was called Intelsat. So the, the first flight of the Space Shuttle Orbiter Endeavour was uh, to rendezvous, capture, and redeploy uh, the Intelsat 6F3 satellite that failed to reach its proper orbit when it was launched into space two years ago. Uh, it was one of those... Um, Actually, t pretty uh, touchy thing. No? Yeah, it was to one of that, those yeah. missions that were completely laid out on paper and everything was exactly determined how it should be done and they had a beautiful drawing for every little step and when they got out there it just didn't work that way for instance this uh, specially constructed bar that was supposed to be attached to the bottom of the satellite it uh, didn't work somehow some problem existed and uh, the astronaut that was standing on this 50 foot long arm that was specially built for this astronaut to recapture this satellite it didn't work it just didn't work uh, some a mechanical problem and as you all have heard in the news um, mission control had to come up with answers to save the mission because that was the, p the most important part, part of this mission and um, so uh, no one knew what to do but the astronauts they sat down together and figured out well let's send out three astronauts so all three went out there? Three, that was the first. It was never done before. Mm. It wasn't actually planned, it was not planned. No, it was not planned. That is the creativity of the human mind in space. Oh, I mean, wonderful. the computer couldn't have thought of it, but people did. And uh, so they did actually go out, three people all at once, which was a very first thing ever. And at 180 degree angles, they were positioned and eventually they grabbed with their hands on the satellite uh, and pulled it in very slowly and uh, put it into the cargo bay, gave it a new motor and off it went. So it sounds very easy in words, but it was by no means because uh, there were valves on the bottom of the satellite that could have ripped space suits, which means mm. the astronauts could have been uh, poisoned, died, yeah. never have returned to Earth. Or uh, the uh, satellite could have stayed in the cargo bay for some reason yeah. they couldn't have gotten rid of it anymore and then they couldn't have closed the cargo bay for re-entry into the earth orbit oh and boy, that, that would was have a risky thing yeah. it was very very risky and uh, no one really realized this uh, people who are not involved in space flight they don't realize how risky these missions actually mm. are and well, and it was uh, then uh, they attached the motor to it and let it go again and yes, the uh, and it was from the ground it was with remote control propelled into its proper yeah, yeah, orbit, orbit which is yeah. many many miles higher and that's actually a communication uh, satellite too so they will use that satellite later on for special purposes i think yeah, yeah. that's uh, that that is uh, the intelsat uh, satellite in march of 1990 the intelsat F, uh, 6 F3 communication satellite was carried to space by a Titan launch vehicle. Oh, there was a Titan yeah. that time, yeah. And the problem is the launch vehicle stranded the satellite in a 560 kilometer high orbit instead of being deployed in its planned geostationary orbit of 36,000 kilometers above the so Earth. So they actually made a mistake that time, yeah. no? Yeah, it just wouldn't go up. And since, since its failed launch, the uh, communication satellite has been orbiting Earth in an orbit unusable for communications. Mm. So that had to be 
rescued. Otherwise, mm. uh, it would be just nonsense, that thing, no? Yeah. Just, just in the wrong orbit. Then, That's no? right. So what did you do down there? You just, uh, you went there and stayed there for how long? For almost 14 days, I think. Yeah, I, uh, well, I As an artist that gave you some ideas, yes, you made I some sketches and all I that. I personally yeah. stayed a little bit longer, but uh, the, uh, the um, actual time I spent at NASA was about four or five days. Four or five days, yeah. We met, we um, traveled through the grounds, and these grounds are unbelievable. Uh, Kennedy Space Center, you don't realize this. Kennedy Space Center is a huge complex. It is... 140,000 acres of land. Eh? Yes. Unbelievable. The, the Kennedy Space Center is about 55 kilometers or 34 miles long from north to south and 10 miles across at its widest point. Nobody, I don't think too many people know that. No, no it's, it's a, that big. No? It's an unbelievably huge complex and of course it's all uh, government land naturally. And yeah, sure. It has so many fantastic um, stations and buildings. There are... <sighs> There are is that the first time you went there, Tina? Is that the first time? Yes, mm. it's the first time. There are buildings there that are so fantastic. They <laughs> one jokes like see the um, I tell you about one building. This is un unbelievable. I have this here, the vehicle assembly building. The 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 size of the building. Three pound, uh, three point twenty-five. Eight, it's eight acres large. That's a that's a that's a One building. building. <laughs> is it a high rise too, or what is it? No, five hundred twenty-five feet tall. Oh boy, boy, that's it. So this part of, of the it's, Kennedy Space Center. It's then. eight acres in volume. Oh, that's eight acres in volume. It's five hundred twenty-five feet tall, two hundred no seven hundred sixteen feet long, and five hundred eighteen feet wide. So that's really it, 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 enormous, no? They say that it has its own clouds. Of course, I think this yeah, is a joke. That's, that's <laughs> just a little joke, there, you know, I'm pretty sure. So uh, what was the purpose actually to go there? Because uh, Tina is uh, that's quite an artist and, and her paintings, and we saw some of them, she is photographing it actually. And then uh, from there, it, you get your ideas actually when you come home. It, is it, the films all develop already to turn out all right? Yeah, yeah, this is all, the, the photo photography is the easy part, naturally. Actually, what it is, NASA has a uh, art program, several art programs, and this art program um, d deals with artists depicting the uh, space activities. Now, there are artists sent to launches, there are artists sent to landings, mm -hmm. there are artists sometimes sent to special procedures, uh, why? Because it's about a 25-year-old program. Why? Because um, it gives another view to the public, mm. not just a purely technical, but the emotional view that uh, an individual artist conceives when he watches all these uh, activities. And the reason why NASA invites the artists is for them, for the artists, to see what actually is happening. Because right, yeah. there is there is a difference uh, when one reads about it or sees it in TV or when one actually goes, goes there, there yeah, yeah. and um, looks at and, and feels the whole situation. I mean, there is more than the technique. There are people and there are a lot of people involved in this and one gets a, a different perspective when one sees what actually goes into one space shuttle. Just think of one little tile on this space shuttle. Each tile on this space shuttle is entirely different in size. Mm. That alone, and how many tiles are on each oh, on each shuttle, you know? Unbelievable. Uh, so it actually gave you great idea for your paintings then, no? Oh, yes. Uh, each Better than you just, like you said, watching it on TV or seeing yes. pictures in, in, in magazines or yes. something. You well, have to be there to well, see Well, you it. get to see the servicing of the space shuttle. You get to see a uh, suit up of the uh, astronauts. Yeah, yeah. There is a tension in the air. For instance, yes, after we've seen for three days everything close up and we've been in all the important buildings which are naturally off limits to everyone except who works there, we, we got the impression what actually was going on there, which is tremendous. It's, it's unfathomable unless you see it. Then, after these three days are over, you expect the launch to happen. But when the morning arrived of zero days to launch yeah, yeah. and you know you see that on every street corner zero days to launch um 
it rained. So it rained, on it, that rained. Day. it hailed, and of course you can't uh, launch a uh, space shuttle in the clouds. You have That's to have right, some. Yeah. You have to have a window where you can do that, weather-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And until four o'clock, no one knew that the shuttle is actually going off, and uh, so there was a little glitch. Still, this didn't work, and that didn't work, and the weather, of course, that was the biggest problem. So. It was five o'clock, they still weren't ent entirely sure, but they did bring the astronauts out to the mm. shuttle. The, they were serviced to enter the shuttle, the astronauts were in there and making preparations to do the launch. But the final okay wasn't there until about 5.30. Mm. Then they, they said, well, now it's too expensive not to go. And if the weather is halfway decent, we will do it. So I was sitting inside and watching close up of course on big screen what's happening mm. on the launch site itself because you cannot go directly to the launch site no, no, you no. will burn crisp because yeah, of yeah. the uh, flames Thank you, Lord, that. yeah so so it was really was something uh, to see no? yeah they count down and then they stop the countdown oh yeah because something else has to be, be done something else has to be done mm. and you sit there and you wait when is it going it to go? It must have been something for the astronauts too, you know, to just that tension. Oh, yes, but yes. They had just different people too, you know, they had just uh, all in training and high t high tech train training, I would say, you know. Yes, well, they are they are very relaxed people. I mean, they have a courage that Did you meet some of the astronauts too? Uh, I did not, but one of the other artists did, mm. because he was assigned to paint astronauts. And oh, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't paint realistically, mm. so I... Uh, did they give you an assignment too, actually, to do? Well, the only assignment that each artist had is to uh, do not work this, mm. but work something else. They, yeah. they don't tell you what to do, but they tell you what you cannot do. For instance, they don't need another painting of the launch because it's been done about a hundred times. hundred and hundred and fifty times. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you have to really relate. You. So but you get some idea already what, you, what you're going to paint? Yes. Uh, you started I've on it already? I've too? already started on it, oh yes. Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> but I wanted and when to is that finished, actually, <laughs> the product? Uh, about probably two months and it takes uh, a couple of months yeah, yeah well it you know you have to this is not an organization that that knows nothing about art they they know a lot about science but they also know about art yeah, yeah. and they expect something because the people that are in the art program are art educated yeah, people yeah, yeah, sure, so you yeah. can't just smear something around oh, you boy, you, you have, have to, have to have do something. something that relates and makes sense because these paintings what happens to them uh they are being taken into the collection and then they are being loaned out and they hang in the Smithsonian. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, travel sure, around yeah. the world and they go to important museums and to uh, important traveling exhibitions. And so, as long as my name is on it, I better yeah, have a good painting, good, no. you know? I saw some uh, some of the paintings that just uh, tremendous, the colors and the ideas. Yeah. Where did you get all these ideas of space, you know? that's another. I think we talked about it last time, but still we can talk about it again. <laughs> yeah, well, Where I did you get these space ideas, you know? The, I the, think the it is a natural with me because I really firmly believe in our uh, exploring space for our own uses and purposes. Mm. And as I said last time I was here, I believe that we will not only occupy Earth, I think eventually we will occupy Mars, that's the next step. Mm. And that's why we're building the space station. From the space station we can launch a lot of vehicles to probe our solar system. Mm. But I wanted to say something else about the day of the launch, you know, mm. you're in this tension constantly. That's right. And then the countdown continues, then you have two minutes left, the countdown stops, then the countdown continues and then it looks like it's really going to go. And it does, and then it goes up. And you know, all you have there is us artists and the press, mm. international press. And then it's, it's awesome, it's a big noise, and the thing goes up. Is it really noisy, yeah? Very noisy. It's mm. like, like, earth like, like, like an earthquake. Yeah, almost, like, eh? like almost, earth but shaking, different. Eh? Yeah. Mm, different. But it is so beautiful because yeah. it's a fire spectacle. And it goes up, and you see the, t the detachment of the two booster rockets, yeah, yeah. which will then fall into the, o into the ocean, will be recovered. And then you see the space shuttle, one light plus two lights going yeah, yeah. up straight. And then you hear nothing. Then you hear the applause all over. Yeah, and then yeah, what yeah, happens, sure. which is very unusual, and I didn't expect it all, over all the public uh, systems, yeah. you hear the national anthem. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and that really gets everybody. Yeah? It really touched me deeply because you feel, 
what an achievement and isn't that a great yeah, yeah, country sure, yeah. america you feel close to america especially when you come from another country like uh, you and i yeah you know. yeah yeah tell her tell her people where you're coming from actually I think actually i was born in germany yeah, yeah i think one can still hear this on my accent yeah. oh yeah sure we don't <laughs> want to lose that anyhow it makes it more interesting my you know. accent is <laughs> noch immer da <laughs> is yeah. it not da i glaube dem verlieren wir nie irgendwie a lot, lot of people lose them too you know yeah. i don't know how they do that you know? <laughs> well Well, I think psychologists say there's a cut-off age if you are 11 years old or so and you oh, come yeah, to yeah, a new yeah. country, then you will... That's right. Uh, when, you, when you are older than 11, then you keep your accent. Something oh, that's, like that's that. That's something like that, yeah. yeah. Oh, But yeah it, it helps sometimes too, you know. It's nice. No, the Muttersprache haben wir immer noch, ne? So, we, at But least we sti speak two languages, at least, you know. <laughs> at least it helps, you know. It helps a you lot. You understand really. the world a little better. If you, the more you know, the better. <laughs> okay, why don't we play a little bit of music and then uh, we come back to Tina and say goodbye and we think about uh, something nice about the space. I mean, it's, it's interesting to hear that. I mean, we have to be there, actually, to, to see all that. Yes, thing, you, know? you have to be there. I mean, it's see it. a, the interest sometimes, you know, I remember when it started out years ago with Werner von Braun, when we yes. had the first one, there was more interest there, but I guess it, yes. it's coming back right now. But the right press now. is still there. It's, it's there. It's, I think it's And you know, we it's think it's old now. head, but it isn't old head no. because there is a um, chance of death. Yeah, sorry. You go up there, it is an adventure. It's still, an adventure, yeah. Because we are not that well educated yet to know it mm. all. And then, of course, we learn from it, you know, and all our, and we can use all that, uh, you know, uh, scientific data, you know. To, oh, yeah, you know. there was more to this, uh, you know, shadow flight than this. Mm. this Satellites yeah. and all yeah. that, you know. Okay, we have a little bit of music here, We're kind of uh, the celebrating that um, endeavor because it's really spectacular. It was really spectacular for the last years, you know. Yes. Really, when that uh, came yeah. down again and all that. Yes. And, uh, the great success of it. Yeah, and it was a great success. And, and uh, just what you just said, uh, okay, we, uh, we had a lot of uh, press coverage this time yes, too, you know. Yes, we did. Interesting. Okay, Chris is all set up, yeah. Good evening, uh, this is Wolfgang Schneider with uh, Tina York, our uh, fine artist, and of course uh, Chris Scharfenberg, who is uh, very much interested in space too, or Chris, huh? Yes, he flies and he knows quite a bit about space, in fact, I think he, uh, about technology, and I think uh, he knows quite a bit, he worked for NASA, I understand, or did research there anyway. Yes. So uh, interesting. So uh, you stayed there almost, you said, 40 days and, and at the Space Center on four or five days. Yeah, no? right. I, spa I stayed at the Space Center about four or five days mm. and I had a wonderful experience and I, I will be there again. I will be, I will be deployed, <laughs> employed, whatever. Employed, yeah. <laughs> deployed. Deployed. <laughs> I will be at the Ames Research Center. I will also go to one of the landings in the future. And I think I'm booked for a future um, virtual reality lab. They need oh, some work on that too. And uh, I'm into learning yeah, I just more wanted about to ask that. you about your plans. You know, to yeah. Just tell us a little bit about it. No? Well, my plans go to are one too? thing, but their plans are another. No, they're going to call me one day and say, we want you to go to a virtual reality lab. Because when you deal with virtual reality, you do not actually need a realistic artist. You need somebody who can interpret this quite in the abstract. And so I'm practically there the only artist who works like I do. I mean, there's nobody else who works like me. And so I'm of some value because of that. A lot of artists, of course, um, do different things that are also of value, but yeah, yeah. they don't do what I do. And therefore, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interesting. You have your own style. <laughs> yes, right. And it's the style of the future anyhow. No? Yes, it is. A, well, it's mine. And, and I, I guess I'm as a person very futuristic and my paintings reflect that. Hmm. It's just better that we're not on TV. We could show all these paintings <laughs> to to him. Yeah. Where where can they see some of your paintings? So is it possible to see them? Well, we uh, have some ex exhibitions or what in uh, around town. I was planning to have an exhibition now, but I'm too busy and I cannot do that now. But I, um, I'm always available if somebody wants to. Um, 
come and see how, paintings. How can they get in, in contact with you? They can call me. Oh, yeah. But, but can we give you a phone number too? Yes, or? you can give okay, my phone you can number. Okay, do it then. Yeah. It's 818-505-0646. Okay, I'd say it may be gain for people who have pencil and paper there. If you want to get in, in touch with uh, Tina to show the paintings and all that, because you have your own studio, I think. Yes, you, I do. And in North Hollywood, I think. Yeah, North Hollywood. Mm. Yeah. It's a big studio? Uh, actually, it's not a big studio. We're trying to move... Um, and I would like to build a big studio. That is, mm. that is, that is the next uh, thing. The I next thing to do to have it there. Once and these then paintings are done, I want to. Get then you have your own gallery, practically. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have your, your own studio. You have uh, your own exhibition space. Mm. And you painted the paint there at the studio. Yeah. Too? yeah. Oh yeah, it's interesting. Dollar overhead lights or what? What? How are you? It is your lighting and all that. Is it? Well, the lighting is artificial. I would like to have a studio that is natural light. Natural light Especially and have these. Uh, yeah. What do they call this? Uh, have the light coming up from the ceiling then? Yeah? yeah, skylights. Skylights, they call it actually, yeah. I think they are not the best for, an, for a studio, for an artist. You need north light because yeah, yeah. you don't want sun reflection. It changes everything you paint. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. You okay. must have the steady light of a north. So you know exactly what kind of lights you would like to oh, have, yeah. 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 You go into lighting then. Oh, yes. Well, uh, anything that you do in painting is has to do with light, you know. Yeah. That's how you perceive color through light. That's right. To, to light is uh, yeah. you have to study light to actually. Uh, to, yes, you, know, you read a lot of books about it too. I'm pretty sure. Well, in my training, we did a lot of this. Yes. Where did you uh, go to school? Uh, let me see. In Germany, uh, as a little child. In Germany, as a little child, yes. You went uh, that to what school? So, the so-called East Germany that that no longer exists. Yeah, thank yeah. God. But then I went into art school here and I was trained yeah. in an, I think I told you this, I was trained in an old-fashioned apprenticeship of eight long intensive years. Mm. This is like, you know, the, yeah, this actually apprenticeship too. Yeah. You had to Morning, study with the night. famous people too, I imagine. Yeah. You know? Morning, noon, and night. We really worked. Mm. And there Where was that actually, Tina? In Boston, in the in Boston, Boston area. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, I went to the School of Museum of Fine Arts there. Scholarship too, you know? Yes. This was Did they give you a degree also too, or is it? Uh, I was never interested in degrees. Mm. No, and as an apprentice, you don't get a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. But I have, my, my teacher, thank God, is alive. So no, <laughs> anyone who know. wants to know, well, yes, eight years went into What it. is he saying about your paintings? Well, I haven't talked to him lately, but uh, he has always had great faith in me. So mm -hmm. uh, he said one thing once to me when I was pretty much maybe after two years or so in the beginning. He said, you know what? He said it to someone. Tina has really one great gift that an artist needs that's essential. And that is when she discovers a corner in her painting that she loves very much, she does not do what other artists do. That is, finish this painting according to that wonderful corner. Mm. She gets rid of this corner and starts new. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is. That that's is wonderful. I found out that is very helpful because you're not trapped. So actually, did, this is your guideline too. In a, but in a bit, way, yes. Yeah, yeah. Do always think about, about that. No? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said a lot more than that, but that just came yeah, to my okay, mind. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> so okay, we know about uh, all her plans, Tina's plans, and then from time to time you give us a little report again. And yes. again, your te uh, phone number is somebody that's interesting to come. I'll you tell know. you. I'll tell are you. you by the way, are your paintings for sale too? They can the sure. No, I, what I'm doing, uh, yeah, I have a lot of paintings for sale, but I do also commissions. Mm, commissions. And I do commissions on anything. Oh, that's I, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I can go from high technology into a lowly potato, you know. Mm. I mean, because also portraits too, or what? No, portraits I do not do because there are enough artists who do portraits. Yeah, 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 sure, I have yeah. I have interest That's in hard to do to you know portraits. Yes, I have done portraits and it was part of my training. Realistic mm. oil portraits. I know how to do them and it's very difficult to do it. How about landscapes and so also, on in general? Yeah, yes. because it's related to... Look, the in a good training you have to do mm. all of this. You do not do abstraction until you do realism and until you do realism well. I always say this to everyone. You must know realism before you do abstraction yeah, yeah, because sure, yeah. how can can you abstract something? You're phony if you abstract. That's right. You don't do that. Mm. You you must know your skill first. You cannot. Mm. You you cannot just throw something on the canvas. You have to know this. You have to know color. You have to know design, and you have to be skilled in all of this. You should actually teach. No, I would not want no, to you teach. Want to teach? <laughs> no. Oh, wait. I mean, now I've, I I find you interesting for. Uh, you as know a what teacher. I will? 
you know what I do? I I've written a book, and um, oh yeah, that book by itself will teach, but I wouldn't want to teach. Mm. I have written a book. It's called The Universe Within Us, but it isn't published yet. It is being mm. considered for publication. It's called The Universe Within Us, and it's it deals with space naturally. Mm. Uh, sure, you like that. It's a I book know. of of paintings based on scanning electron micrographs of the human body, mm. and I'm doing an extrapolation from the uh, inner worlds that we are to the outer worlds that mm. we haven't even explored yet. So we have a lot, lot to talk about, it, and we they kind of uh, put it off uh, to next time because we really did a good job on it, I think. And we taped it too, I think, no? I think so, yes. Yeah, Chris did it, no? So interesting for you to to play it then, <laughs> when you come home yeah, and lay down and play, play well, all that. I only uh, review it, and that's all I do. How did you discover our show, anyhow? Now you listen to it uh, mostly all the time, no? Well, originally I was told about your show by, by Dr. Noll. By Dr. Noll. Yeah. who uh, told me he knows you. Mm, they played you on my soccer team. You're, yeah, that's He's right. He's a very fine uh, MD, a very good doctor, yes. and also sports medicine too. And uh, maybe he's listening to it. We say hello to him and to his family too. Yeah, yes, yes, Ed, if Ed, you're yeah. listening, hello to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, how do you like our show in general, you know? Yeah. How do well, you like the show? Uh, I uh, first tuned in when he told me, go and uh, tune in to this number and mm. I heard you Wolfgang Schneider and I enjoyed it very much because it's you know it's close to my heart mm. naturally I'm I was That's raised in Germany know. and I'm a German girl basically yeah, but sure. I'm I'm not you know I don't belong in any country I'm I'm international, international but, yeah. but my roots somehow began in Germany and there are a lot of memories oh, yeah, when sure. I hear this music and I love the music, music is nice I yeah. love it yeah so now you have a chance to do listen sometimes yeah of course I do Whenever you have a chance. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> okay, we say hello to to Tina, and uh, we wish you luck. And from time to time, if you have new things coming up, you give us a call and you come up again. Give us a little report again. Yeah? I'll call you when I come back from the virtual reality yeah. lab. When is that going to take place? A few months from now. A few months. Oh, you can come. I mean, call us before, you know. <laughs> I call you before. Call us sometimes during the show, to too, you know. Yes, I will do that. Play something for you or something. Yeah. Okay, and Chris has all our nice music set up, and I'd like to thank uh, Tina York for coming down here. And, and again, if people want to get in contact, you give your phone number again. That's important, no? 818-505-0646. Okay. And now back to our normal show, and we really enjoy the, the show. I mean, uh, Tina was right there at the Space Center. That's interesting to to hear that. I mean, we just see everything just on TV, you know. Now we have a person who, who saw all that, you know, and, and gave us a, a very, very nice report, I think. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>